Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is November 25th, 2018, and what you are looking at is a representative example of my cast iron collection. And the, the subject of the video is helping you identify unmarked cast iron. A number of these are unmarked. Some of them are marked. We have similar ones, Wagner and Griswold, for example, side by side that are marked and unmarked, and you can see the characteristics that are typical of those manufacturers and when you're out and you're treasure hunting for this stuff maybe you're at a flea market or you're at a um, antique mall anything like that and you come across a piece of cast iron you're not sure what it is it would help if you earmarked this website i've given this to you before on some of my other videos but i'm going to give it to you again i will link it below in the description it is www.castironcollector.com as simple as that castironcollector.com the website is phenomenal it goes over what to look for when hunting for cast iron what is collectible what is not collectible how to restore it how to strip it safely using lye or electrolysis how to season it properly, how to maintain and clean it properly, and all of those types of things. It's a phenomenal site. The same people that run that site also have a pyrexcollector.com because Pyrex is highly collectible. At any rate, some of these pieces, even though they are not marked, are also collectible and also depends on the condition they're in. Cast iron is highly sought after, and many of the antique shops I've been in looking for it, the I say, can you call me when it comes in? And they say, oh, it goes real quick. And they usually never call me because by the time I'd get down there, somebody else would buy it. I mean, it's that sought after. So at any rate, we're going to go ahead and start out with modern day uh, skillets. Basically, the only thing you can get today, well, you can get several, several companies. I don't happen to have them because I like the vintage stuff. They have Stargazer, I believe, is a cast iron manufacturer today. I think it's made in the USA. The Field Company is made in the USA. They only market two skillets, a number eight and a number ten. And they are, I believe, made out of recycled iron. They run, I think, $125 for the number eight and $160 for the number ten. They're very light, uh, but they're not nearly as heavy as these guys right here. But at any rate, I'm going to just show you some lodge, which is more modern. This lodge here is a griddle, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the general look of the underside there is a looks like a recessed heat ring i believe it's design only uh, you don't have the traditional heat ring stoves they did back in the early 1900s the lodge logo is a recessed logo they call it an egg logo uh, you have an egg in the skillet right there lodge made in the usa it's a 90 g for griddle this is a pancake griddle uh, you could fry hamburgers on it, whatever. Uh, you could do potato patties on it. And this one is relatively new. I think I picked it up a year or two ago. And I uh, sanded it down to make it a little smoother. They come with a very pebbly surface. They still can be nonstick, but it's better when you don't hear your fingernails like a chalkboard on it. I did strip this one and this one with the 4-inch Avanti Pro disc that I attached to my electric drill. I bought the disc, four inch disc with a quarter inch attachment uh, to my electric drill. I bought it at Home Depot a couple of years back. But at any rate, this is a griddle and you can tell it's black. I've used a little bit more than this guy here. This is a number eight. It's a 10 inch skillet. You can tell it's upside down, but you can see that. Made in the USA. It's an eight skillet. SK means skillet. And if it was a Dutch oven, you'd see a DO on there uh, to that degree. Um, but anyway, this one here is a modern lodge. I don't have any old lodge to show you, but you can see that the poor spouts are not definitive like the older manufactured or old hand-tooled cast iron skillets. This is a modern lodge. You can go to Walmart and pick these up. They're cheap. They're 15 to 20 bucks. Somewhere in there, you can actually buy them on um, at Amazon. I think I got a couple at Amazon when I first started into the prepping thing. 
but that's a modern lodge. The older lodge will have notches. They're a real old lodge may have a heat ring that's not recessed. It's actually opposite of that. That doesn't have any notches, but they're quite, quite rare. I've never seen them. Usually they have a notch here, a notch here, and a notch here at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. Some of the earlier ones just have one notch, but that's how you spot a lodge. They have notches on the heat rings. Nobody else does that that I'm aware of. So that's lodge. Now the next up, and the other thing is too with USA there, the modern cast iron is required to stamp their skillets if it's made in the USA starting in 1960. After 1960, if it has made in USA, here's one that's unmarked. It says made in USA. You know it was made after 1960. Well, this one actually is an old Wagner. We'll get back to that in just a minute. So we're going to go over to an unmarked Wagner. And you can see here it just says six and a half inch skillet with a model number there. And here is the handle with a little bit of a ledge there and again an H on the handle. And this is a Wagner. It's got slightly more definitive pour spouts. This is a marked Wagner. These are number threes, as you can see. And this is a marked Wagner Ware from Sydney, Ohio. And there is the model number, a 1053. We're going to turn it right side up. And you can see side by side, they look identical. Some of the unmarked versions were made for uh, stores such as Montgomery Ward, Woolworths, and some department stores like that back in the early to mid-1900s. But you can see they're pretty much the same skillet, and believe it or not, the ones that are unmarked that have the characteristics of the marked ones have become quite collectible. People market them on eBay and just say it's a Wagner. Um, I don't know if you should do that, but I just say unmarked Wagner, and then I go to describe this, this skillet and why. But there's the difference. But because it doesn't have made in USA, this was made probably from the 40s to the 50s, somewhere in there, along with the same time this was made. Now you also have Griswold. Griswold is another name made in Erie, PA. This is a marked skillet here. It also has a little shelf on the handle. Griswold and Wagner's were very similar. Uh, some of the differences, though, you can see some of the, maybe not so much on this one, I'm going to show you a number five that has milling on in circular pattern on the cooking surface. But this one is a large logo Griswold, it's a number three. This one is an unmarked Griswold, but it's slightly different because of the handle. The handle identifies it as an Iron Mountain series. And if you look in your cast iron collector, the four-digit pin will be italicized at 6 o'clock on the pan, and the size of the pan, or what it corresponds to on a cooked stove with the inset heat ring there. Number three is also italicized. This is an old unmarked Griswold. And there it is there, and you can see the more definitive pour spouts on both of these. That one I have up uh, for sale. This one I use all the time. So I don't need a ton of skillets, but I just wanted to show you the difference between these two. And here is an older Griswold. It's marked Erie. doesn't have made in the USA, but they should have Erie stamped on them somewhere. That one has just Erie. It's more crude. It's a number 10. It's a slant Griswold, large logo with a cross in the middle there. That's standard with them and with the heat ring. Anytime you see a heat ring like that, it's an older skillet and it's meant to correspond with an inset in the old stoves that people used to cook with back in the early 1900s. So just so you guys know why those are there. And this is a number 10. It is 12 inches across, and it's still brown because I've never used it. I just, I love it. I'm going to keep it. It's highly collectible. It's worth probably in the neighborhood of 200 plus. I just can't bear to part with it, so I'm going to keep it. That's my favorite one. I totally stripped it, but I found it in excellent condition. So that is old. The heat rings will identify them as old, and that is the website. I just printed out some notes there. 
I could refer to, but that is the website you want. Now here we have a couple of fives. This is a small logo Griswold. It's a number five. Erie PA, and, and because it doesn't say made in USA, it was made before 1960, more likely in the 40s or 50s. It's got the standard handle that they use, and it's got the very definitive pour spouts. And here's a Wagner marked side by side, and the pour spout is there, definitive, but not quite as overt as the Griswold. But you look here at the bottom of the pan. Let me try to get in here so you can see it. See the tooling there? The milling that was done? I see that more on Wagner's than any other skillet out there. This is a Griswold. You just see some you know, scuff marks from utensils over the years. Uh, they're there just because it normal use. I mean, you could probably sandblast it, but then you might ruin some of the collectible value of it if you're ever wanting to sell it someday. Now here is an unmarked Birmingham stove and range. It's also a number five. It's crude. It's a 5R. The handle on it is a little bit different. And it's also a little bit smaller than the Griswold. So just because it's a number five, all number fives are not equal or made the same. It just w it was meant to correspond with an inset on the old stove tops. But this one, I'll get to Birmingham Stove and Range in a minute. I just wanted to show you that all number fives are not the same size. So those are some of the, the things that you can look for. Now Birmingham Stove and Range there is a Dutch oven by them. It's unmarked. Here is a number 10. And you can see the, the handle on the skillet. And this is a number 5. You can see the handle on the skillet. They have that trademark design. They're not at all like, I'll turn these back over, like the Wagner Ware or the Griswold. But they always have an inset heat ring on the older Birmingham Stove and Range. Actually, they're most of them are going to be older because I think they stopped making skillets. Uh, they weren't making them anymore in the 1960s. Now this one here, I thought was a Birmingham stove and range. This one here has this handle. Some people say it's like a Griswold, but it looks really, really old. Like, I don't know, it, it looks primitive. Um, but it does have the heat ring. This is one of the first skillets that I restored. It's really black. Really nice. The pour spouts are very slight, like the 5 Birmingham and the 10 Birmingham. And very smooth. But there's a raised number on the handle. And Lodge, old Lodge, old one, back in 1900 to 1930s, or 1900 to 1910, sometimes had the raised number on the handle. This one has it, so it's got, some people said, oh, that's an old lodge. And it could be an old lodge, only because you have the continuous heat ring, and most of these have been destroyed, and they're not in existence anymore. So this possibly could be an old lodge. I've been told it's a southern mystery skillet, because it has the heat ring like the Birmingham stove and range here. But this handle is very unusual. It looks almost like a Wagner handle on some of the old, on their older skillets. But at any rate, this is kind of how you can tell what you have. And the one note I want to make on the Dutch oven over here, the Dutch oven, and especially on the lids, it's an eight, number eight, I think it's a four quart. But the dimples here are irregular, random pattern, and some of the other ones, like a lodge, have circles in, in the middle there, a circular pattern. These are dimples, so this is a definitely a Birmingham Stove and Range Dutch oven. I think I've used it once. <laughs> I like it, but I just haven't, you know, used it as much as the other skillets. So there, I, I hope I have addressed some of your concerns. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Please remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you want to see more things like this from time to time, 
please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you can be alerted of my videos. And give me a thumb up also if you like videos like this. And I will also link to castironcollector.com in, the, des in this, the description. And one more thing before I go. I had forgotten. I have um, an example of a Birmingham stove and range skillet that actually is marked. We're going to take a look at that. I've never seen one. Ever, ever, ever. And I have shopped for cast iron a lot. But that is what a marked skillet looks like. And I'm going to go grab an unmarked one. So... There it is. There's the pour spout. There's the heat ring. There is the font. Now that one is marked and it was made a little bit later, probably the 1950s. This one is a little earlier. You can see the font there. And it was around 6 o'clock, but it was more primitive. So 30s of 40s on this one. But there's the heat ring. There are. There is the, well, that picture doesn't show it. There is the pour spout and this pour spout here. The handle, the handle looks primitive, but or war, maybe just worn down. There's the handle on this one. If you can see it there. So I wanted to show you that. That's the only way I had to look it up because I've never seen one that's marked. So if you ever find one, I, I, I would imagine that's highly collectible. This video is getting long enough. I do thank you guys for watching. And it does pay to... Keep shopping. The cast iron is out there. And when you look at that site, it's going to help you learn to identify it. So thanks for watching, guys, and go make it a great day.